Howdy. How you going? I actually really wanted to talk about The Last Jedi. I just got out of the cinema seeing it. I'm sorry about the lighting. Um, the lighting in my rooms, I normally film during the day. Anyway, uh, that's not what you want to hear. So I just want to talk my real thoughts on Last Jedi while it's still fresh in my mind. And i got to be honest, this is most likely the best Star Wars film I've ever seen. I've This is ab was absolutely phenomenal. And there are parts that, like, I was like, meh, you know, um, because it feels like, um, like they're on a bunch of uh, different quests. Like, we've got a whole bunch of different stories going at once, smaller quests. And the thing is, though, is it's, even though it feels like it's in the middle, leading to the conclusion in some ways, it's all still really solid, and all the way I was invested. And I've seen so many films in the past where I haven't been invested, but damn, I wanted to know everything that happened. Just a warning, spoilers alert, because I'm going to go into spoiler territory. I'll talk about the story and that sort of thing. Um, so, obviously, Mark Hamill coming back was what I really wanted to see. And the highlight of the film what for me was, and the best scenes were, um, on the island with um, uh, Luke training Rey. And simply because it brings up the things we love about Star Wars, that we all love. You know, some people are mixed on TIE fighter scenes and that sort of thing. I'm meh on TIE fighter scenes. I don't care much about them because there's no human investment the same way. There's much less. But here, it does something the original Star Wars films didn't do. It's not just black or white, good or evil. Both Kylo Ren and Rey face each other and Morally, they both got different sides, completely opposite, yet you can kind of understand both sides, and you can feel a real temptation for um, Ray to gum, uh, gum, uh, go over to the dark side. And it's just beautiful, because there's also a pull from Kylo Ren, who, said, who kind of wants to go over to the, uh, the Jedi side. Um, light side, whatever we call it, and it, it, it's just an amazing thing because you're invested in both characters now. I actually like Kylo Ren now. It didn't feel like in... The, while the original um, new Star Wars movie was, uh, you know, really good, um, it felt like a little bit of too much of a retread for me, and that was a complaint with a lot of people. It was very, very safe. It was always kind of winking to the camera and stuff, but this was actually challenging. It was morally challenging, it shows, like, there isn't really one specific good side. And it's kind of dark in that no matter what the Rebels do, they can't catch a break. They are always being sized down, something bad, and you actually feel kind of freaking terrified for them. And that's a beautiful thing. And all the characters work in so well. Like, um... Uh, Leia, uh, obviously, um, Carrie Fisher does a fantastic role, like, she just fits the role well, um, she's, you know, invested, she's scared when she should be scared, it's just, um, you know, she's worried, and then she's out, you think she's gone, and then she comes back, and there's just these key moments in this one that are so beautiful, just so, holy crap, that just happened, and it's like, um, oh, just... Uh, and the best parts are, uh, I think, that this film can do silent moments, it can do quiet moments. In a lot of Western films, we can't do quiet moments. We see it more in Eastern films, like anime, um, and that sort of thing, where, or a Miyazaki film, for example, where you can see a quiet moment where the atmosphere sets in, and we get a lot of that on the island, when um, Luke is uh, training uh, Rey. And it has the most beautiful starting point, where we're all waiting as she uh, gives the um, uh, lightsaber for uh, Luke to take it, and you go, oh, thank you. But So he goes, Pfft. it's just like the best, best sort of delivery you could have done. And, and Mark Hamill is fantastic in this. Like, we haven't seen him act for so long, except in, obviously, voice acting, which is still very much acting. Um, but he really just has a presence on stage, and... He feels like Luke Skywalker so many years in the future, and I don't quite understand the hatred behind this one. It, I don't get it. I mean, like, it covers such new ground. This feels more like the Star Wars universe from some of the games, like Knights of the Old Republic. Knights of the Old Republic had a moral conundrum. It was like there was gray area about the Force and the Sith, and what makes a person a fit, Sith, it almost made it interesting to be a Sith, because a Sith wasn't sort of constrained by the, uh, 
certain monikers and like, and there was this freedom to it, but also they were still trying to do the right thing to bring order. And that's the case with Kylo Ren too. That is a real good villain. And, and the ending, oh, holy crap. And like, there are just certain parts, like a part where you think everything is lost during a space battle and everyone is being destroyed. The rebellion is destroyed. There's this one move. Um, you know, um, one thing happens and all at once, boom, everything comes together. It's one of those movies I uh, left the cinema. For one, obviously, there is a major flash factor, but... Ah, oh, and like, my fa absolute favorite scene, um, spoilers alert, is when Kylo Ren and Rey are in there. We get a retread of the, la um, the not Last Jedi, the um, uh, a Return of the Jedi scene, my favorite scene. And it is really intimidating, really scary. It feels kind of terrifying, and it's retreading it, but at the same time, it's like, I'm, I remember this, but it's it's different at the same time, and it, oh, I was just so blown away, and it was a sudden moment, and you get these moments, you're on this, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gushing a little bit, you, you, but so much of it, I was just on the edge of my seat, and I, I've just, I haven't had this good cinema experience probably since the final Harry Potter film, and take that how you may, you know, I thought the final Harry Potter film was incredibly good. And it concludes, we were left on such bloody cliffhangers in the last uh, film, but in this one it finishes, and uh, again, big spoiler alert here, so tune out if you're not, uh, if you don't want to hear it, but um, when Luke disappears, holy crap, it's a moment where you're just like, that felt right. And I'm sad at the same time, and it is just such a beautiful reflection of, of, of life and, and, and the character and your investment in, in him. And it's a send-off to him. It's just, and, and, and this final scene with Luke coming back, it's just, I, all I wanted was to see Luke come back and do this role so well. And he did, because I freaking love Mark Hamill. He's an amazing actor, amazing character. And this was just almost a, just a beautiful send-off to him. And it didn't feel like sudden and, oh my god, that was jarring, like with, um, like with, uh, uh, Han Solo. Um, it, it felt, no, this is how it should have happened. So, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've probably baffled, um, rough, raffled on, uh, whatever, but I just wanted to talk about it a bit. And, like, it, there isn't as much of the forced, uh, you know, forced force powers. Like, it all feels earned. Um, they feel like, yes, this person should be this powerful. Like, when Luke actually uses his power, it's like, yeah, he should be able to do that. And, no, amazing battle scenes. What, my favorite scenes absolutely were. Um, any of the scenes with the Jedi, uh, Luke, Kylo Ren, or Rey, and their kind of interchanges, because there is that big moral conundrum going on that we have never seen in the series before, where there is not just a good versus bad. It's like, no, there are greys, and you can see both sides. You can kind of see the way the um, rebels could be interpreted as terrorists. It's, and, and, and obviously, you know, I'm, I'm just absolutely want, you know, see the rebels succeed, but like, you can see both sides, and that's just really, really cool. So yeah, absolutely blown away by this, in case you are someone who was wondering my thoughts on it, you know, absolutely loved it. I would love to know from, in the comments, let me know what was it people didn't like about this movie. It, it gave a beautiful send-off to Luke. Um, like everyone was an amazing actor in it, there's a new character, only one scene I didn't like. And that was kind of the casino scene, I was just felt it was very, it was the only real scene that stood out as like, I just feel like I'm in, you know, the city casino. Um, and, but there was kind of a point to that because, and the, the first thing I pointed out to Raz was like, they're all white, why is that? Where are all the aliens? Because it's kind of meant to be redoing the can cantina scene, but we later find out it's because they're being oppressive and white people are the best for those, for obvious reasons. Um, and, you know, I just, that was the only thing that kind of stood out to me as sort of like, yeah, they could have made it a bit more alien in the casino and stuff, but uh, still didn't, overall, I would give this movie a 9 out of 10, maybe even a 9.5. Um, I'd say, I'd never say 10, and in this case I'm not, because there are certain, there was one part I was starting to look at my watch at, and that was when 
they're um, trying to take down the uh, walkers on the uh, rebel base um, they just established. And that was the only scene though. And then th that continues from there and like Luke comes in and it was just like, damn, no, now it's amazing again. So yeah, nine and a half for me, maybe a nine. And I'd love to know in the comments what you didn't like about it personally or what you liked about it, you know? Let me know your thoughts. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening to Prattle On. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.